Before starting this video, I would like to thank my sponsors for helping me out. What's going on guys, Gizmodict here and today I'm going to show you how to build a gaming PC. This video is the second part of my $2000 gaming and video editing PC project. In the first part, I covered all the parts and the components that I will be using inside this build. So if you haven't checked it out yet, the link is in the video's description. So coming to the installation process, first of all, get yourself a table to work on along with a screwdriver. Also make sure that there are not any carpets or rugs around the table or anything which could build up any static. Now go ahead and take out your motherboard from its box and keep it on the box itself. The motherboard's box is a very good surface to work on. The square portion which you can see at the center of the motherboard is where we have to install our CPU. For this video, I am using the Intel i7-4770K CPU along with the Gigabyte GA-Z97X Gaming 7 motherboard. Inside the processor box, you will find the CPU itself along with a heatsink. Make sure that you always hold your CPU from its sides and do not touch the golden area because if you do that, you might damage one of the pins and the CPU would not work. If you take a close look at the CPU, you will see an arrow at one of the bottom corners. You can also see a similar arrow at the CPU socket on the motherboard. So now to install the CPU, press the lever handle next to the CPU socket on the motherboard and lift it up. Hold your CPU from the sides and align the arrow on the CPU with the arrow on the motherboard socket. And then gently place your CPU over the socket. Do not use any kind of force because the CPU will fit right into place. Once you have done that, put the metal plate over the socket again and secure the lever under the retention tab. You might need to use a little force to secure the lever properly. Now we have the CPU in place, so it's time to install the heatsink. You can use a variety of cooling solutions like an air cooler or a liquid cooler or even a custom cooling block. But for this video, I'm going to show you the installation of the stock cooler. The stock cooler comes with pre-applied thermal paste, so you don't need to buy one. Installing the heatsink is actually a very easy task on Intel processors. First of all, make sure that all the pins are in the direction of the arrow shown on them. Then just align the four pins on the four holes around the CPU socket and then push the opposite sides of the pins at the same time. You will hear a click sound when you push down each pin and then finally after pushing all the pins, turn the pins in the opposite direction of the arrows shown on them to secure the heatsink perfectly. You will also see a fan connector protruding out of the heatsink. You need to connect this to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Now that we have the CPU as well as the heatsink in place, it's time to install the RAM sticks. First of all, open the retaining clips on both the sides of the memory slots. If you take a close look at a RAM stick, you will see a notch at about two-third of the distance. Align this notch with the one on the motherboard socket and then gently push your RAM into the RAM slot until the clips snap back into place. I am using 16GB of G-Skill Trident X RAM in this build. And as you can see, as I push the RAM into the slot, the clips will snap back into place and the RAM will be secured perfectly. So with the RAM, CPU and the heatsink installed, it's time to move to the PC case and the power supply. Unscrew the thumb screws on both the sides of the PC case and the side panels will slide out easily. Take out all the paperwork you have inside the case along with a set of screws and cable ties. First we have to install the power supply into the case. Depending upon your case, you might have to install it on the top or on the bottom of the case. The Cooler Master Scout 2 case which I am using right now supports the bottom orientation of the power supply. So align the four holes on the power supply with the ones on the case and then install the screws on the opposite sides first. Then install the other two screws and tighten them so that your power supply installs correctly. After you have installed your power supply, just move it a little bit to check whether it has been secured perfectly. Now it's time to install the motherboard onto the case. First of all, take out the IO shield which you got with your motherboard and place it at the back of the PC case. 
use a little force to secure it tightly at the back of the case. If you take a closer look at the inner surface of the PC case, you will see 8 little standoffs at different places. These standoffs align with the holes on the motherboard. So now take your motherboard and align it in such a way that all the holes cover the standoffs perfectly and the rear I.O. ports fit into the I.O. shield without any issues. Once you've got your motherboard aligned inside the case, start installing the screws over the standoffs. The motherboard is a fragile component so do not tighten the screws a lot. After you have installed the screws, it's time to connect the power cables to the motherboard. Every motherboard uses a standard 20 plus 4 pin connector. So grab the largest cable from your power supply and connect it to the motherboard. It will only go in one way. Near the CPU, you can also see a 4 pin or an 8 pin CPU power connector depending upon the motherboard. So grab a 4 pin or a 4 plus 4 pin connector from the power supply and connect it into the CPU power socket. This cable will again go in only one way. Now I will install the GPU onto the motherboard. So on your motherboard you can see PCI Express lanes where the GPU is to be installed. My motherboard has 3 PCI Express slots but I will install the GPU into the by 16 slot. Installing the GPU is actually a very easy task. First of all remove some of the plates from the back of the PC case. Then align the GPU with the PCI Express slot such that the output connections of the GPU face the back side of the case. Use a little force and push the card into the slot. You will hear a click sound and the card will secure perfectly into place. Install the screws at the back of the case to secure the card perfectly. Depending upon your GPU, you might need to plug in some power cables. I have the Zotac NVIDIA GTX 780 GPU which as you can see requires a 6 plus 8 pin power connector. Now we have to install the SSD and the hard drive. To install an SSD, you will require a 2.5 to 3.5 drive bay which is usually provided in the case or with the SSD. Just screw the SSD onto the drive bay and now you can install this in your case. The Cooler Master Scout 2 case which I have provides these drive rails which you can connect into the screw holes of the hard drives and then you can slide them easily into the drive slots. Otherwise you might have to screw them manually into the hard drive slots of the case. Installing the hard drive is also the same process but here you can directly install the hard drive without the use of any drive base. Once you have installed your drives, connect the SATA power cable from the power supply and also connect the SATA cable from the motherboard to the hard drives. Make sure that you always connect your SSD to a SATA 3 port on your motherboard. Now that we have everything installed, it's time to connect all the case connections to the motherboard. Grab the USB 2.0 connector of the case and plug it into the USB 2.0 header on the motherboard. If your case supports a USB 3.0 port, then connect the USB 3.0 connector to the USB 3.0 header on the motherboard. Connect the case fans into the fan ports on the motherboard and finally, you need to install the front audio connections and the power reset button connections. These may vary according to the case and the motherboard, so refer to your motherboard's manual for the connections. Finally, you have completed the installation process and now it's time to give this PC a test run. Switch on the PC and boot into the BIOS of the motherboard. Here you can check out various options and verify whether all the parts are recognized or not. The last thing remaining is the installation of an operating system. Depending upon your preference, you can install Windows or Linux using a CD or a flash drive. If your case supports cable management, you can do that too to make your system look clean. Slide the side panels back into place and screw them tightly. Congratulations, you have successfully made a gaming PC for yourself. Install a few games and enjoy your newly built gaming PC. I hope this video has helped you out and if it did, please hit the like button to appreciate my efforts. For more such amazing videos, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below this video. This was the second part of my $2000 gaming PC build and I will be back with the benchmarks soon. So please be subscribed so that you are notified whenever my new video comes out. You can also follow Gizmodict on social media. I regularly post updates there. The links are in the video's description. Thank you for watching and I will be back with a new video soon. Peace.